Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at my YouTube channel and my blog, KeepsiteCrafts.net. Today I wanted to introduce you to a really cool product. These are Pebio Prism Fantasy Paints, and these do amazing things, which I will show you shortly. They come in these larger bottles. You can find them at some Michaels stores. I'll have a link to this set on Amazon where you can buy what's called the Discovery Set and get a whole bunch of the smaller bottles in a variety of colors just so you can experiment. But believe me, I want to get lots more colors because these are just amazingly cool. So what I've done to show you all about these paints is I've made a little sample on just a tile. And I just wrote in the numbers, they're right here on the bottles, they each have a number, so 39, so I know what's wet. And this is what they look like after drying. You can see they have this amazing honeycomb texture, but they don't look like this when you first apply them. So here are all the colors I currently have. Like I said, I want to get lots more. And over here, what I did was as I put my droplets on this side, I put a line of each color next to the next one over here. And you can see, I didn't mix them or anything, but you can see how they blend and mix together and create just these gorgeous effects. Now, notice that this one, called Moon, doesn't do that. So if you're looking for the honeycomb effect, make sure you get the one that says Prism or it almost looks like Prisme. The Prism paints are the ones that give you the honeycomb effects. The moon paints are gorgeous, and notice what the silvery moon paint did. I put it next to some of this Caribbean blue, and then also some of the English red, and it's quite beautiful the way. I just put it next to it, and it just kind of crawled in, and it's just gorgeous. So they're quite beautiful to use, but you will not get the honeycombing effect with the moon paints. Pebio has a whole bunch of different paints that you can use together. There's vitriol, which is translucent. There's a ceramic one, which is more opaque. But let me show you some other things that I've done with these paints. So here's what I suggest you do. If you're considering playing with Pebio paints, is go through your stash of old polymer clay bits and pieces. Here I have some some beads and some pieces that I never really was particularly thrilled with, but I saved them for something, and that this is what I ended up using them for. It's just test pieces. Now, Pebios do their thing best on a flat, horizontal surface. It doesn't mean you can't paint them on another surface. Like, I I had done the, the front of this bead and then decided I liked it so much I wanted the rest of it painted, and so I've, I stuck an awl in there and painted the rest of it. But I nece it necessarily had to be a thin layer, otherwise it would have all dripped off. The thicker the layer, the more of this honeycombing that you get. So although you can use these paints to paint on vertical surfaces or curved surfaces, you're going to get the best effects if it's just a flat, horizontal surface and preferably some kind of bezel. You could see out of all of my pieces, these two gave the most honeycombing. And these are the ones with a smooth inner edge that held the paints in. And I've noticed that I got, for the most part, the best effects with those. Even these two bezels, which were ones that I made out of polymer clay, I think because the edges were irregular, I didn't get the quite the effects I wanted. So I would suggest you get some old baked polymer clay pieces and practice and play. One thing you may notice right away is that the texture of what is underneath will come through, which I was kind of sad about because this was a, a bead that wasn't so great. It had some lumps in it, but this combination of colors, it, this one just came out so pretty and I was disappointed that it's so lumpy I won't be able to use it. On this one, I basically laid lines of different colors together, just like I showed you on my test piece. So have some fun and practice and play. Right now I'm working on a white tile so you can see what I'm doing, but I really recommend you work on a non-stick craft sheet that will work clean up easily. Although the tile will too, like a big 12 by 12 tile. Because the problem with these curved pieces is that the paint all wants to drip off the ends. So when you put it on nice and thick to get the effect, and I kind of messed up the surface on these, playing with it, 
I wanted to see what it would do if I manipulated it a bit while it was a little bit more dry than at other points. But let's move on to playing with some of these paints. Now if you're working with a piece with a bezel edge that you can handle easily, you don't need to do this, but these edges are going to be painted. So what I'm going to do is take some, just some repositionable adhesive, this is scrapbooking adhesive, and just adhere them down to my surface. That way as I'm brushing and painting, they're not gonna move on me. And really, if you're doing a finished piece, what I would recommend is do it in the opposite order that I did this. First paint the back and the sides and let it dry completely, and then do your fun effects on the other side. And that way, your piece will be finished all around, and then you won't have to mess up. I had some pretty things on here that kind of got messed up when I painted the rest of it. So it really is one of those things you just have to do some experimenting. So let's see, my favorites are turquoise, and this eggshell white, and this emerald. I just sort of love those together. Now the directions say to clean your brushes with odorless mineral spirits, which in my mind is a pain in the neck, so I'm not, not even going to use a paintbrush. I, what I have here are some skewer sticks that I cut in half. These are just like barbecue sticks, and I cut them in half. I'm going to use these for stirring, which is very important and applying the paint. So have yourself a paper towel nearby and back to stirring, very important. If you look in there, you might be able to see that it's separated. There's a solvent, which is what makes the paints do what they do, and you need to be constantly stirring that in. So when your paints are brand new, you may have to like scrape up a bunch of the stuff from the bottom of the bottle. I know I did. I had to spend quite a bit of time stirring. And it's a good idea to just have a few pieces nearby to work on so that you're not wasting your paint. So stir, 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 stir. And then stir a little bit more because if you don't stir it well, you won't get that cool effect. So why bother? So you do need to stir. And then I'm just going to use this to apply paint to my piece. Now it's interesting, as artists, sometimes we're very much, we want very much to be in control of the creative process. But these paints kind of take it away from you. Because although you think you might be controlling things, when you come back 20 minutes later, well, you'll see. Uh, what you expected to see is not there at all. So I'm putting a pretty thick layer on and I'm trying to kind of clean off my stick here. I don't want to waste this stuff. And then I'm just going to use a paper towel and wipe that off well. And then some of this eggshell white, which is just a pretty... Again, stir, 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 stir. You can really see how you've got that line of solvent in there. So you just keep stirring until you don't see it anymore. So like I said, it really is best to have this in something with the bezel that keeps it contained. Because you can see, I don't know if you can see over here, it's already dripping over the edges. I'm not going to worry about it for now. This is a demonstration. But in another, in an upcoming polymer clay video, I will show you how to make polymer clay bezels. And then we'll fill them with these Pebio paints. You can dot in right in the middle of the other color, and you can see it's pushing it aside. You can take a toothpick or your barbecue stick and play with those, but it won't look like that when you're done. It'll be kind of a, a loose impressionistic, very impressionistic form of what you did there, but it won't look like that. So you kind of have to just embrace the fact that it's not going to look exactly like what you're putting down right now. You can see already how much that's changed. So in a way, you, you really, what you're mainly in control of is the composition of your colors, roughly. And already, you're seeing how it's changing. I love this emerald green with the turquoise. Do I use too much turquoise in my, in my jewelry? Tell me if you want me to stop using blue for a while. Boy, that would be hard. Just keep in mind, I've edited out a lot of the stirring time because I don't want to bore you to death, but 
It's very important that you do it in your projects. You can do things like this. Oh, pretty. Just don't get attached to it because it's not going to stay that way. If you're using a lot of paints, perhaps doing a big area, they recommend you use pipettes to pick up and apply the paint. But for small projects like this, uh, these little sticks work great, and like I said, then you don't have to bother with cleaning paint brushes. So now I've put this on fast forward, although unlike in most cases, this particular process makes watching paint dry actually kind of interesting. The hard part is leaving it alone and not fiddling with it while it's doing its drying. And here's what the pieces look like after drying for 30 minutes. If you're interested in the supplies I used in this video, there's a link in the upper right that will bring you to the accompanying blog post. So go ahead and get yourself some pebios and some bezels and have some fun playing. If you're new here and you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you do for three new video tutorials each week. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you're interested in supporting my videos, check out my Patreon page. You can also share your ideas for future Friday findings in the comments below, and I'll see if I can make you a video. Happy creating. Bye-bye.